Let's talk about osmosis. Osmosis is important because it is how cells are able to balance particles that they have inside of them and water so that the concentration of things is equal. Typically, cells have salt, sugar, and other particles inside them like this, and they're sitting surrounded by salt, sugar, and other particles. Now, the thing with those particles, of course, is that they want to be equally balanced. They want to have a fairly definite size, their fairly definite concentration that is similar between them. If that's true, we call that isotonic. Now, sometimes that doesn't happen. We end up with something that has way too many particles on the inside. And so here I'm going to add some particles on the inside and far fewer particles on the outside. Now what's the cell going to do? Well, it can't easily move the particles. They almost always move by facilitated diffusion or active transport or something that makes it too complicated. But water moves through open channels. Since water moves through open channels, it's much more capable of being able to move from place to place. And in fact, if there's too much stuff on the inside of a cell, the water from the outside will try to move into the inside. What this could do is it can expand the outside of that cell, so it'll make the cell much bigger, which will then spread the particles out quite a bit more. Now what about the reverse? In the reverse situation, we have a cell that has particles inside of it, except that these particles now are too few inside the cell and too many outside the cell. So what's the cell going to do? Well, just like before, the water is going to move, not the particles, but this time, the water is going to move out of the cell. When the water moves out of the cell, the outside of the cell will shrink, thereby bringing these particles closer together and making the concentration more similar to the outside. So now that you've seen how this works in a general sense, let's look at some specific examples. So for instance, let's say that we are looking at your bloodstream. In your bloodstream, so here's a blood vessel, Normally, you have a bunch of particles of things like salts and sugars and stuff like that. So here's a bunch of particles. The liquid surrounding your bloodstream, all those cells have some similar particles in them. So that's isotonic. But if you eat a very salty meal, all that salt is going to try to wind up here in your bloodstream, throwing off the concentration. Now the water wants to move to compensate. So what the water is going to do is it's going to push towards the particles and into the bloodstream. This does a couple of different things. The blood vessels will expand a little bit, which also provides that feeling of sort of swelling or bloatedness that you get when you eat a lot of salt. It also causes the blood pressure to increase when water rushes into the bloodstream, which is what happens when people eat salty things, their blood pressure goes up. Let's look at another example. This time, we're going to go to the kidney. So here is a picture of your kidney. Looks like a kidney bean. And this time, let's say that somebody is diabetic, and because of that, they end up with a lot of sugars in their bloodstream, and those sugars all come to the kidney to get cleaned out. So a lot of sugar is getting dumped off in the kidney. Now, there are still some things around it, but not nearly as much. Therefore, it needs to balance. What's it going to do? Well, the water is going to move into the kidney to try to balance out these particles. And water in your kidney is water that ends up going to your bladder and ends up flushing out by way of urination, which is, by the way, a common symptom for diabetes, frequent urination. So now, let's look at another example, only this time it would be a disease. In your large intestine, whoop, most of the time this is where food goes to exit. Also, usually that food loses water and the water goes back into your body. However, 
if you have been in a third world country and you have caught cholera, that causes chloride ions to fill up your large intestine. So now there's a whole bunch of ions in there that weren't in there before. Just like in all these other cases, the body wants to balance and it will go ahead and try to add water to the large intestine to balance out those chloride particles. You know what happens to water in your large intestine? It comes out your large intestine only. We call that diarrhea and it's not supposed to happen. I have one more osmosis example for you, and we're going to go back to the bloodstream. But this time, although we're going to be inside the bloodstream, I am also interested in actual blood cells. So let me draw some blood cells. And blood cells always have particles in them, and honestly, the particles inside the blood cells very rarely change. They're about the same concentration no matter what's going on around them. But in this case, let's say you've become dehydrated. When you become dehydrated, you lose water from your blood vessels, which causes the particles in the blood vessels to get real tight around these blood cells. That is going to make the blood cells unhappy. They are going to try to adjust. Now, they can't change the number of salts inside of them, but they can push out water to try to become more concentrated. And what's going to happen then is your blood cells are going to shrink. They shrivel up to try and balance the concentration. Blood cells, as you might know, carry oxygen, which is important for energy. And shriveled up blood cells don't carry oxygen very well, which is why when you're dehydrated, you feel crummy and like you have no energy. So those are some examples of osmosis. And you can see now how it works and is an important factor in the human body.